the whole father son ar- argument if you explain me that i think i'm ready to take my life for christ number one jews christians and muslims agree god is unlike anything in creation god says he is beyond our ability to fully comprehend no matter how much you try he's an infinite mind so you can see this is what god says and does but you may not fully comprehend it i understand yeah and that's true even of created things like there are things in the world that science says are true but we don't understand like quark theory and so on and so forth so yeah, something that we can't fully comprehend doesn't mean it's not true now that we got that the, the trinity teaches there is this existence we call god we use the term being yeah being means existence i don't know if you were listening earlier but you may not have everything that exists means it has being for example just to use this this has being because it exists right this has being but this is not a person right 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 so everything that exists means it has being being means existence but mm-hmm. not every being right is a person mm-hmm. correct yeah yeah like when you pick up a rock that has being but it's not a person right exactly even like um the way she has prayed i don't understand why we put a rock like or something on top of the, the prayer mat it just makes no sense see but so my point is a rock it has existence but it's not a person so now you have being but your being is that of a human so you you are a human being to be a human being means you're also a person so right. certain beings certain natures include personhood you're a person god is an infinite being so his existence is like anything so what god has revealed to us in the bible the father is god the son jesus is god who became man from the virgin so father is god son is god the spirit is god it's what we see in the bible the father is not the son because that's why they communicate and love one another because they're not the same person son is not the spirit because the son right, is right. Spirit is not the Father because he sent from the Father. So now we know they're not the same person. And by person, I don't mean Father has a physical body. Because the word person doesn't always mean someone who has a physical body. Person means just someone who has awareness. But then the Bible says God is only one. So then if the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and yet there's only one God, that means they're the one God. So that means there are three persons who are one God. So that means in the being of God, his being is so majestic and infinite that there are three persons that exist as that being. within god oh, okay 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 i see i Whereas see you are limited and finite so you you only exist as one being and one person yeah and then but god's god three being is not identical to yours that's why he's infinitely more complex so when someone tells me well how can god be one god if he's three persons why well, then they tell me, well, look, you're one being one person. Yeah, but I'm not God. I'm a finite, limited creature. You're not going to limit God to my existence. So how could God die then? Well, because God didn't die by virtue of being God. He died by virtue of being a man without ceasing to exist. Can an all-powerful God become human and die a human death without ceasing to exist? No. How do you know? Are you a prophet? Did God tell you that person? No, I'm not a prophet, but if we talk about because if you're going to argue as a Shia, then I can tell you then you don't know what Islam teaches. Because the Quran says even humans, when they're killed, they're not dead. They're alive. That's in oh. your, chapter 2, verse 154 of the Quran. And say not of those who are slain in the way of God, they are dead. No, nay, they are living. So this is uh. talking about human beings. They're not dead, but it says they're killed. So this is why I asked you. If even the Quran says that when you're killed, you're still alive. So I ask you the question, can God become human without ceasing to be God and die human death without ceasing to exist? If humans who are just humans are killed, but they're still alive, and the Quran says, don't say they're dead. You're saying God can't become human and die human death and still be alive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So according to the Quran, death is not ceasing to exist. When I physically die, I don't cease to exist. My spirit leaves my body, I'm still alive. My body is buried. So why can't Jesus be God? who becomes man, dies a human death, but is still alive. There is no good reason. Now I can answer the why. God of the Bible does not go back on his word, does not change his mind. When he says something, he does it. So he says, you sin, you die. He told Adam and Eve, if you eat of the tree, you'll die. Okay, so now God doesn't break his word because he's just and he does what he says, right? But God is a God of love and compassion and mercy. Though Adam and Eve sin, though we sin, he doesn't want us to die. He doesn't delight in our death. He wants us to live. So he says, make toba, repent. You turn, you'll be forgiven. But now here's the thing. We are told that shall God say something and not do it? Of course, when he says it, he'll do it. So now he said, if you sin, you'll die. But I don't want you to die. I want you to live. 
So if you turn, I'll forgive you. But he says, if you sin, you shall die. So now God, who is consistent, doesn't go against his word. How can he do both? That if you sin, then the debt, the payment is death. But if you pay it, then you die. But he doesn't want you to die. So he's willing to forgive you if you turn. But then that means if you don't die, he went back on his word. Well, I'm going to explain it with an analogy because the Bible says sin is a debt. If you were in my house and you intentionally or accidentally smashed my television. To give you a bad example. So give an example. You smashed my television set. You smashed my windows, right? Yep. You go to jail, let's say. Now, you need to bail out. You don't have the money to bail out. And now, not only that, if I take you to a small claims court, you're going to have to pay for the damages, right? But then you feel remorse and conviction, and you truly repent, saying, man, I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to do what I did. I really am sorry. Please forgive me. I can't pay the debt, but please have mercy and forgive me. And I say, all right, you know what? I forgive you. I'm going to bail you out, and I'm not going to take you to small claims court. You're forgiven, right? But still, I have to then pay for the damages, right? Yeah, that's, that's so true. But I, because you asked for forgiveness from your heart, and I saw you're genuine, I was moved with compassion, I canceled your debt, and I paid it. Because now I have to restore my windows, my television set, and I even paid for your bail to be released. So your forgiveness came at a cost. It cost me, because I was willing to pay your debt so you can be free. So what Jesus does, he says, since sin is a debt, when you sin, you die. That's your debt. But if you die, then you won't live. And I want you to live. Therefore, I will pay your debt for you. But now we have a problem. Jesus, as God, is spirit. And he's not a man. He became a man. It is always a, he wasn't always a man. Yeah. So Jesus, as spirit, for him to pay your debt. Well, what is your debt? Death. Human death. Okay, but how can Jesus pay your debt? Meaning if he pays the debt, that means he's volunteering to die as payment for your debt because that's the payment, death. So if Jesus is spirit and the debt you owe is a human death, but he wants to pay for you so you can be forgiven, how can he do it? The only way he can do that is by becoming human and dying, right? Yeah. You see the logic now? Yeah, Lighting. I see it. Now, if Jesus' payment is accepted, okay, here's the payment. Oh, your debt is canceled. If the debt is canceled, that means death would be canceled, right? True. That's why Jesus rose from the dead, to show the debt is canceled. To confirm it. Oh, I see, I see. Now the light switch went on. And that's why he says, my resurrection proves your debt is canceled because my payment has been accepted. And now if you trust in me, the day will come where I will raise your bodies to live forever with me. <laughs> Got okay, uh, I guess I'm, I'm ready some. So what do I what do I do now? Well, if you read what we read, and if you mean it, not compulsion, you got to confess first, and then you got to go get baptized. So are you sure? You I am Abu Ishaq. I will find you. I will slay you, son. You are the devil. I know really? where you are from. Go ahead. Son. What else? Go ahead. You are the devil. You are the spawn really? of what Satan. Else? You bold bastard. Really? I will find you. No way. <laughs>